Since we talked about the, the, the children coming yep. into this uh, world, yep. Um, uh, since they don't have a past life, yep. Um, uh, why do they attract these uh, two parents? Uh, it, well, the real question is why do these two parents attract that particular soul? No, uh, the, I, I want to say why does this child attract these parents? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd say it the other way around. Yeah. Why do these two parents attract? this little soul, this little person here. And the real answer to that question is also about love. These parents, for them to grow in love, they need this child more than they need any other child. The personality and nature of this child in its pure condition will help these two parents grow in love more than any other child that they could have attracted would have. That's the reason why they attracted them. Far away. But um, then it must be an abuse on the child. What's an abuse on the child? Um, if um, these parents um, are very abusive, then they abuse the child. And the well, chi child hasn't done anything. Well, these parents the have... The, the, correct. These parents have a choice, do they not? This is the choice they have. Do they wish to refine their condition of love? Do they wish to get more loving? Or do they wish to be worse? Do they get, wish to be more unloving? They have a choice. Every single person has a choice. And these parents have a choice. So these parents are faced with this choice when they bring this child into the world. Are they going to choose to actually develop in love towards the child and therefore have to change themselves? Or are they going to choose to not change themselves and to force the child into their way of looking at things and their way of conceiving the world and their way of doing things and their way of being unloving? Now, most parents, unfortunately, choose the second. They, they choose the latter. They choose to act unlovingly towards their newly incarnated child, unfortunately. But they don't have to. They could actually choose to exercise their will in a loving way towards the child and therefore grow through the experience of the child. This child is the perfect child to help those parents become more loving. This child is the best possible personality, the best possible individual that of all the different children they, those particular two parents could have, this particular child is the best person that they, that they need to grow more loving but then it's really up to the choice of the parents of what do they do now they can choose to become more unloving which would actually be abusive towards the child or they can choose to become more loving now I recommend that every parent chooses to become more loving but but unfortunately we often avoid love as parents just as much as we avoid love in other aspects of our life so then the child doesn't have any choice well, when the child incarnates, um, of course it doesn't have choice because it doesn't even know how to make a choice. Before the child incarnated, it had no idea about will. It didn't know how to exercise its will. It didn't know itself, so it didn't know itself. It didn't know its personality, its own nature, its, you know, what kind of characteristics it has and uh, what, kind of, what kind of feelings it had. It, it has yet to have any, no, it has no experience, right? So it has to incarnate in order to gain these things. So it has to incarnate into some parent. Now, the way God's done it is that uh, God's done it in such a way that it incarnates to the parents who need that child the most in terms of need that child in order to help them become more loving. That's how God created the, the system. So, so, this is, so it always gets back, and this is something I feel most audiences avoid. We are so focused on something God doing as being unfair, when God didn't create the unfairness, we did. Right? This child getting abused is only created by the parent's choice to abuse it. Right? It's not created by anything else. And quite often this is what we don't focus on. What we do as parents is we want to constantly disclaim our responsibility towards the child. 
But the reality is this child was the perfect child to help us work through our unloving emotions and become closer to God, closer to each other, closer to other people in the world. And so this child is the perfect individual to help us through that process. And what do we do with it? Instead of accepting it as that gift of being the perfect person to help us go through all of these emotions, when it gets sick or when it does certain things or different things happen to it, we blame the child. And, we say, and then we come up with even belief systems that blame the child. Belief systems such as reincarnation, which actually do blame the child. Right? It blames the child for making the choice. The reality is the choices were made by these parents. Let's, let's forget about the child for a moment. It's the parent's choice to be unloving that creates the damage for the child. That's what creates the damage. And what we need to do as parents is go, now hang on a sec, we've got to stop blaming the child and start looking and taking responsibility for our own actions in terms of what's going on here. That's what I feel most of us avoid. And what we do, we even create belief systems that avoid it in order to avoid our personal responsibility towards the child. Yeah. Does that, that help? 